serious. What was your weirdest, creepiest online experience? It seems I have some sort of online stalker right now. Someone giving out my number all over the internet, claiming to be some attractive girl named Sarah. I have thirsty guys texting me almost every day looking to hook up. It was funny at first, but now that random dick pics have started, it's a bit much. I'm a dude. Definitely not some horny girl named Sarah you met on Omegle. It is creepy because it started six months ago and is still happening consistently and I have no idea who it could be because I changed my number 12 months ago and only a handful of people I know in real life have the number. Some person did text me knowing the city and area I live in started threatening to find me if I didn't show him my boobs. It's just insanity. I was casual friends with someone I played RuneScape with for a year. We didn't know each other outside of RuneScape. One day we argue about something petty and suddenly they PM me all my details, my home address, my family members. My stomach sank. When I was a kid, my computer was hacked, I guess. I wasn't the only one using it and definitely wasn't the one that got the virus, but a chat would pop up telling me to remove my shirt and undress and the camera light turned on. I was like nine. A long time ago, while playing Counter-Strike 1.6, I got into an argument with another player and they opened up my disk tray to my desktop computer. I turned my computer off and unplugged it so fast. That is when I truly learned how vulnerable you are on the internet back in the early 2000s. My kid once gave out his password to some random guy on the internet who promised he would level him up in a game. Yeah, that guy got into all my kids accounts and added his home address, which was in a different state. So that got reported to the police and I got to sit my then 11 year old down and have a very frank talk about what we don't ever do online with strangers. A few months ago, I wasn't aware that scammers could send emails with your password on it until recently. It was near midnight and I was doing online school since I worked the entire day. I then decided to check my email and my spam folder because it's sometimes funny to see what ends up there. Well, I found an email that said my password as the first word for some random site, but I was unsure which one it was. After that, they said that they had a video of me having a fun time after they secretly turned my camera on, and they then went on to explain they got my password from a porn site and complimented my tastes. They then demanded a $1,200 plus PayPal transaction, and if that didn't pay by midnight, they'd spread it to everyone I know and across the internet. I deleted the email and was literally shaking. Then, after a talk with the local police department, they told me that it was a scam and that other people called for the same fears, so I just deleted it and so far nothing has happened. Definitely scared the shit out of me as I'm used to scam calls but not emails. I made sure to change my password on everything and have two-factor authentication and I don't even have an account for porn. Stay safe, those scammers are persistent and will say anything to get petty money. I was playing GTA 5 a few years ago and I was talking in a lobby with the other players. One of them asks if I had gone to the Dollar General that day. I did so I asked why. I figured he was setting up a joke or something. He said he was at Dollar General earlier and recognized my voice and that he lived on 1st Street which was the street next to mine. I didn't talk much after that. I had an amusing experience once. I got a random message saying, Hi Annie, it was great to meet you last night. You were quite the kisser. I'm taken aback as my name is Annie, but I hadn't been out anywhere. So I reply saying, I'm sorry, you've got the wrong number. He replied apologizing. Then about an hour later, the number text again and said, are you sure you're not Annie? I said, I am called Annie, but I didn't kiss anyone last night. I was at home. So I asked where he thought he met me and he named a club that was in my local city. I was so confused. Curiosity got the better of me and I actually called him and we had a chat. It turned out he had kissed a girl named Annie and they ended up getting separated in the club and he wanted her number. He said he got my number from her friend that he had seen coming out of a toilet. I figured it must be someone I knew that had another friend called Annie and she gave the wrong Annie's number. He described what she looked like and I narrowed it down to three people. I sent out a text to them and sure enough it had been one of them. I asked her to check with the other Annie if she wanted her number passing on and she did. I passed the number on. A couple of weeks later, I caught up with this friend, I actually worked with her, who said they had had a couple of dates and it was going well. That was my good deed, even if it was a bit weird. 
I used to fiddle around on an app called IMVU. It's popular among people who roleplay stories. You make little avatars and can enter chat rooms with other people. There's also a direct messaging section. During one of my many years on the app, I had one person constantly DM me every few weeks. Eventually, I got a text on Instagram saying I looked nice and that I should go to a lake nearby my house. Now, this is odd because it wasn't anyone I knew of, and I didn't put my personal information on IMVU, Instagram, or anything else I have. I blocked the account, and a few seconds later, my IMVU pinged. It was a text from that account again. Before anyone asks, yes, I did block them, I blocked every new account they had, and it was that same person again, asking why I blocked them. By that point, I was just done, and deleted the app altogether. No one ever knocked on my door, and I never saw anyone following me, so I'm assuming they were just pinging my address. For unrelated reasons, we moved a few months after that, thankfully. I used to play a lot of Hobo Hotel when I was a young and extremely gullible kid. One day, a dude by the age of 16, in his own words, started talking to me. He asked me for my Skype almost right off the bat, and me, being the gullible kid I was, gave it to him. He then asked if he could call me on Skype. I agreed, still as oblivious as ever. He told me his camera and mic were broken, and that he'd have to continue writing in the chat, another red flag that completely flew over my head. I had my camera and mic on though, and we just chatted for a bit, before he told me he was getting horny. I just answered that maybe he should wank then. Honestly, how was I still not understanding the situation? And he agreed. I was about to end the call, but he insisted I stay on, so I did. Why? After he was done, we ended the call. I was oblivious enough to agree to two more calls. He wanked in all three, I'm before realizing anything. During the last call, he asked me to open my mouth so that he could pretend to uh, shoot his load in there. Lucky for me, at that moment, my mom called me for dinner. After that, I started to feel uncomfortable about the whole situation, so I blocked him, deleted my Skype account, and made a new one. I was 12 at the time, and it never occurred to me how serious the situation truly was until I was like 15 or 16. Still feel icky about it sometimes. When I lived in a dorm my freshman year of college, there was a creepy dude who was always hitting on the girls. At first, his messages were exactly what you'd expect, like, I'll treat you right, girl, and you ain't never gonna see a man like me. But after a few rejections, he started sending nonsense, and kafinka do was one I'd get a lot, and variations thereof. I blocked him, but he created new accounts. Then, one day, he said he was going to come fuck me, and I was going to like it. I screenshotted the hell out of that and reported it to the authorities. Turns out, I wasn't the only girl he'd been bothering. He got kicked out of school, was banned from being near the girl's dorm, and the last I heard, he was delivery guy for Papa John's Pizza because he couldn't get a better job with a collective restraining order placed on him. I recently got Discord, and a random guy DM'd me. He seemed nice. We talked for about five minutes or so until I asked him how he got to me of all people on Discord to DM, and he sent me a file of something. I wasn't stupid enough to download something from someone random on the internet, so I asked what the download's about, and he hasn't replied back. Kind of curious still after two years what he sent. Edit. So during that time, I was starting to become friends with this girl I have no contact with now. After reading a particular comment, I decided to bust out my 15-year-old Mac that has no use for anything and opened it in the Mac. Opening the file made my screen go black and opened a notebook file that just said, Do you remember girl's name? I don't know what the hell this means. Someone has to know how a file can do this too, right? A few years ago, I was on a doll collecting forum. I always kept myself logged in, which means I always appeared on the chat, but I never personally used it. I stay logged in because my sister also wanted to view the forum, but you couldn't click most of them if you were logged out. One day, I'm looking at the site and I get a private message via the chat system. I thought that was weird, but I clicked it to see what was up. It was one member asking me if I'd ever talked to another member. I told her no, I never used the chat and didn't even know how to private message anyone. She said, that's what I thought. She's talking crazy about you in the main chat. This other person was in the main chat saying I had contacted them, demanding that they give me their address and contact information, otherwise I would tell my uncle, who's a federal marshal on them, and send him after them. I just closed it, but it really creeped me out, because I've never seen that user on the site. They had never responded to any of my buy, sell, trade threads, we never spoke in any of the new releases or new purchase section. Not only that, but my uncle had just gotten his badge only a short amount of time before that incident, and I had never spoken to anyone about that. 
I don't even think they were in the U.S. I asked my sister if she had contacted anyone on the site, and she swears she did not. I believe her because she's the type who won't even look at my phone if I'm busy, get a message, and ask her what it says. She's also browsed Reddit while I'm logged in and will let me know if I get a message but won't check it. She's not nosy. She just liked looking at doll releases and hauls. She didn't even know the site had a chat because it was minimized in the corner if you didn't use it. There were many other people, not just the one who messaged me, sticking up for me in the chat, saying they never had a problem with me. I had never contacted them. They had never seen me use the main chat or know me to use the private one. That did my heart good at least. I think the mods stepped in and banned them because I didn't see anything else from them after that. I was extensively groomed by multiple people from age 13 until I became an adult. Unfortunately for them, and luckily for me, being extremely online since I was a tween wised me up very quickly to what they were doing. So I'd usually enjoy the attention and occasionally gifts for a while until they got too aggressive. They caught on and one of us ghosted. In hindsight, I wish I had told someone. I was smart. Continuing to engage with them at all is stupid on all levels, but some of them were very clever and charming, and I could absolutely believe less savvy kids fell for it. The amount of brazen pedophiles online will never cease to amaze me. The weirdest thing to happen to me was years ago. I got a random phone call in the middle of the night, like 1.30, 2am. There was a woman on the other side and she said, Hey James, using James because I forgot the name and it isn't important, I need to talk to you. I said in the sleepy type of voice you would expect someone to have at that time, I'm not James, you must have the wrong number. She was unconvinced when I said that twice. She read the number back to me that she dialed as if she was reading it off a piece of paper, which was mine, and said, James, I really need to talk to you right now. Wake up. I just went with it. I said, okay, okay, I'm awake. What's up? She proceeds to tell me about this guy she introduced me to a year ago, her boyfriend. Apparently, this guy had gotten into some serious trouble, arrested, and was facing a long time in jail. She would generally have decided to cut contact because she was not aware of his illicit activities until he was arrested for it. To her dismay, this happened while she was halfway through a pregnancy, marriage plans, and she promised the guy she would name the baby after him. I listened, quiet as a mouse, to her laying the whole thing out. I was certain she would be embarrassed and realize the error of her ways when I started speaking. So we get there. She asks me what she should do, how to proceed. I talked over her story and gave her advice like I would my own sister. She listened as intently to me, talking as I did her and didn't interrupt or second guess me or James once. After we were done talking, she thanked me and said she knew she could count on me. I seriously must sound exactly like this dude. I had to be up early in the morning, so I lay back down to go to sleep in total disbelief. The entire call was a little over 30 minutes. I try to go back to sleep. The phone rings again like 10 minutes later. It's her. She says, OMG, I switched the last two numbers around. I'm sorry, and hung up. 